So we will start with what is a customer segment. And after this lesson, I'm sure you'll walk away with a deeper understanding of customers and markets than you ever thought possible. In only 30 minutes, right? We will probe what and why of customer segment before we look to enhance and transform customer segment innovation. And at the end of this video, you'll see markets and customers differently because you'll see it through a new lens. Customer segment examines how well defined the market is, focusing on the established customer base managed by your organization and how you respond to customer needs. Now, a market is a group of customers, but contrary to what you think or have been taught, these customers are not looking to buy your product. They're looking to hire a solution to solve their problem because they are trying to get a job done. Clayton Christensen of Harvard University said this, or words to this effect. So if you haven't heard of the late Clayton Christensen, then you can think of him as the rock star of innovation methods. He basically invented the theory of disruptive innovation, which you know is one of the foundations New Ledge was built on. And he's also credited with co-creating jobs theory. The job to be done is the customer's goal. And because you are providing a solution to solve your customer's problem, the market is the job to be done. This idea date back, dates back to Theodore Levitt, also of Harvard, who famously said in the 1960 that people or, or customers don't want a quarter inch drill. They want a quarter inch hole. This statement will make sense to you in a few minutes. Job to be done, as well as disruptive innovation. It's one of the proven innovation methods that underpins New Ledge CDI. Job to be done is a method to help product teams coordinate with marketing and sales teams. And it makes you truly customer centric. So it's not just rhetoric. This is because you follow a needs first rather than an ideas first approach to innovation. Incidentally, you, you would know the rule to brainstorming is there are no bad ideas, right? Well, let me tell you, the market and the academic sphere is full of bad ideas. And you'll see in the next lesson in particular, following a needs first approach allows you to build products with features that solve very specific unmet needs. And this is what people are willing to pay for. So when applying job to be done, your first step involves defining the market as a group of people, plus the job they're trying to get done. Example, uh, consumers are trying to get to a destination on time. Teachers are trying to pass on their lessons. Managers are trying to help business. STEM grads like you are looking to get high or higher paying jobs in purpose-driven companies. Hint, hint. So a job or problem statement embodies what the customer is ultimately trying to accomplish. People hire solutions to get a job done. Knowing that changes everything. Traditional market definitions are fatally flawed because they all use the product as a key variable. Let me explain. Traditional market sizing is based on variations of the following equation. The market is equal to the product price times the number of units sold. So in 2005-06, for example, the iPod market was huge. $150 for an iPod, right? 200 million iPods sold, a 30 billion US dollar market. I had a first generation iPod, by the way. Uh, it used to blow people away when I tune it into the radio and, and stream the music using Bluetooth, right? It was a great party trick, but that was a long time ago now. Anyway, recognizing the expansion of this so-called iPod market, Microsoft thought they could compete using their very own technology. The iPod competitor product, Zoom, which I must admit I've never seen. They probably thought, well, if the iPod market is worth 30 billion and we just get 5%, then Zoom will be worth $1.5 billion US. I'm sure you've heard market sizing justifications exactly like this, right? Well, Microsoft, for all of their success, lost a lot of money and a lot of credibility chasing iPods. This is what the iPod market looked like at the end of 2011. And on the horizontal axes, you can see years and quarters of each year. And then on the vertical axes, you can see the sales growth rate. In the program, you'll learn the product uh, four life cycle stages are introduction, growth, maturity, and decline. 
and we'll revisit the iPod. So do you know what happened in Q1 or first quarter of 2006 to create this dramatic slump in iPod sales? Well, the iPhone entered the market. And as you can see in the previous slide, that market defined by the product, it went away, effectively meaning that Microsoft was looking to take a share of virtually nothing. But of course, the true market, that customer's job to be done, it didn't go away. The iPod may have gone away, but people didn't stop executing the job. The customer still wanted to store music and listen to it remotely. Sizing markets using products is a key variable. It's still done by most companies, and it's taught in nearly all strategy, product, and marketing courses at university. And I should know, I've taught 16 business units at university, undergraduate, postgraduate, MBA level, and I always felt like something wasn't right. Even way back in 2007 or 08, when I first started lecturing at university. And even when I started working as a strategy consultant, traditional market sizing was still being pushed. And I have to admit, I've sized many markets using flawed traditional methods. Even Philip Kotler, the godfather of Marketing 101, he now admits his methods of sizing markets don't work. And he acknowledges jobs theory. So. Please don't spend tens of thousands of dollars doing an MBA to eventually realize it doesn't work. Don't even spend $10 on something that doesn't work. You, you want to get the job done. So the jobs definition of a market explains what happened to this non-existent iPod market. There's no such thing as an iPod market. There never was. Customers didn't want iPods any more than they wanted records, cassettes, or CDs. What they want is to get a job done. The job has remained stable over time. In this case, the job uh, was emotional, to create a mood with music, and functional, to be able to store their music and listen to it remotely. Price, or units, units sold of a product, it's a flawed definition of a market because it can disappear from right under your feet. Defining the market based on the customer's job to be done is much more helpful because that job will exist forever and therefore the market will too. Later in the program, you'll learn about startup company failure rates and how to pivot and not fail. One of the biggest reasons for failure is that these companies build products that people don't need. There's a famous quote by Henry Ford, Ford Motor Vehicles. If I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Now, this shows that customers can easily describe a problem they're having. In this case, we wanted to get to somewhere faster. But they can't describe the solution, nor should they. That's our job to come up with the solutions. It's our job to solve the customer's problem. Product-defined markets lead directly to failure. Kodak thought there was a market for film and went from $30 billion to bankruptcy. And you know, one of their engineers put a concept for a digital camera on the executive's desk well before anyone else was doing it. Apparently, he was told by the executive, get that thing away from me. We will continue to improve film for cameras. So companies fail when they define their markets based on products. And product focus ironically leads your team directly to failure. And that's a hard pill to swallow. And today, technology enables products to change at rapidly accelerating rates. And this is largely why companies fail. 40% of the Fortune 500 will no longer exist in just 10 years because their products will be obsolete. Jobs theory shows that customers are not buying your product. They are hiring your product to get a job done. This means that your customers will fire your product when a new product helps them get their job done better, faster, more accurately, and possibly cheaper. This is why Apple, Google and Facebook became three of the most valuable companies in history in the exact same markets as BlackBerry, Encyclopedia Britannica, and Kodak. These companies failed because there are no keyboard device, uh, encyclopedia, or film markets. These are all products that decline rapidly over time. But there are, and there always will be, markets to execute jobs while mobile, uh, to find information, and to share memories. These are all stable jobs to be done. 
What about blockbuster video um, store versus Netflix? History always repeats itself. Define and size your market using MBA and Marketing 101 methods and you'll find out fast what it's like to fail. Or I hope you'll find out fast. It may take money, years and, and a couple of postgraduate degrees like MBA. Thank you.